Welcome back to my kitchen floor. You ready for part two of the dishware? There's so much stuff here. Okay, so first I'm gonna start with some plates that I actually have washed. Um, these were these were some of my favorite plate finds, even though some of them are not necessarily gonna sell for a lot, but they're fun. So let me see, this is Hazel Atlas. I forget the name of this design, but um, and this is only a saucer, so it, this is gonna not really sell for a lot of money, but um, these dishes often do really well. There are some solid like glass tumblers. So, you know, with this design on them, there are little chili bowls. There are plates, um, other stuff. I forget all of the pieces. I don't know that I've ever seen like a, a teacup or a cup that would sit in the saucer. So that's interesting. But anyway, um, and this also was done in like an aqua color blue and in yellow. I feel like the yellow might go for a lot more. The red is the most common, but it's such a fun design. So anyway, that's Hazel Atlas. A saucer alone is not going to go for anything, and I didn't find other pieces to go with it. Then I got these. These are also made by Hazel Atlas. Um, these are this milk glass kind of material, and it is, they call this color fired on. So essentially they have this like white glass, which is kind of similar to Pyrex. Um, I think with Hazel Atlas, Atlas it's called Platinite, P-L-A-T-O-N-I-T-E. I always just call it just milk glass. Like milk glass is technically something different, but white glass. So it's the white glass and then they paint this like, you know, or spray or whatever they do, this pink color on it and then fire it on like in a kiln, I guess. I don't know if we can see the Hazel Atlas logo a little bit better. Hold it upside down. So I know I talked about it. You can see that's like an H with a little A underneath it. So I talked about that with the glasses, but that's what that logo looks like. So I got two of the little pink saucers for that. And continuing with the saucers, I got a whole bunch of jadeite saucers. These are Fire King. So jadeite is this green glass. Um, and it's this, you know, if you don't know already, I'm sorry if you already know and you're like, you know, and I'm explaining it and you're like, no shit, you know what jadeite is. But in case you don't know what jadeite is, it's this like milky kind of green, not like that 70s clear green. You know, this is more opaque. Um, and then this design is called Jane Ray and they are made by Fire King. And there's like a whole history of this stuff. So there's different stamps that you'll, you'll find on the back. Oops. And these were made for several years. I can't remember if they started in the 30s or 40s, but I think they were definitely made in the 40s and in the 50s. So um, saucers. Again, the saucers, whatever, dime a dozen, the least used item in a set of dishes. So those aren't that exciting. Um, next, I have these. These are also Hazel Atlas. So they go... Well, saucers. And I don't know if they go specifically together. The color is the same, but I don't know if it was like a different set because obviously these have these ridges and these don't. But. So anyway, these are like actual functional dishes that you could potentially use. They don't have markings on them, but I, I already knew that they were Hazel Atlas from previous experience. And I got a total of one, two, three, five of these plates. I have three that have come clean already. But I have two more that are being a little stubborn. Um, all of these ridges in here really collected like grimy dirt that does not want to come off. So I still have two plates that need work. So I got those. I already have a set of four of these listed in my Etsy shop. I can't remember if they're the same size as this or maybe a little bit smaller, still like a functional plate. But you know, today's dinner plates are a lot larger than some of these older plates were. So and this would have been, I think, a, a dinner plate back in the day. But now we're all fucking gluttons and all of our portions are gigantic. All right. Next, this was exciting because I don't find jadeite anymore. Jane Ray dinner plates. So these, I only found two, but I'll take it. And these should sell um, based on current Etsy available listings. Like I think it's reasonable to ask $20 plus shipping on each of these. I will probably try to build shipping into my listing. Um, what's really nice is that for 
most of these dishes, all the jadeite and the larger pink plates at the very least, I have already had Etsy listings for these items in the past. So um, normally what I would have done is just copied the listing so I, and then tweak it a little bit. But because I've since learned about that Etsy item quality score and like how many times an item has sold plays into your quality score and how, you know, all of that, that's something I've just recently learned. Um, and so I will probably take those old listings and renew them rather than copy them. And um, I am, hmm, I want to say that I'm going to remember to put this into the description of the video, but I will be very surprised if I remember to put it in the description. I want to tell you where I've been learning this information about Etsy and their listing scores and everything. And um, I get that from a YouTube channel. Um, Starla Moore is the person, but, and she works for a company called E-Rank. E-Rank has, E-Rank is a website where you can get all sorts of like search engine optimization information specifically about Etsy. I can't remember if they've added in new um, platforms into the discussion there, but it's really interesting. And they really focus more on handmade information. Oh, that's her channel. Her channel name is under her name, Starla Moore, M-O-O-R-E. Um, I love her channel so much, even though the information that they provide really is focused more on handmade sellers it's still valuable information. And so especially things like this whole like um, repeatable item type of thing, you know, if you're a handmade seller, you can do that. You can make a thing and then somebody orders it. And every time that item sells, that listing just renews. And so you could have this one thing that has sold 75 times and people review the item, et cetera. Um, that's really not possible. It's not it's not easy for vintage sellers. There are some ways in which it can be possible. You know, again, if I keep finding these Jane Ray plates over and over again, I can kind of do that. I get a little uncomfortable because of course I'm disclosing flaws and things like that. Um, so it's always a little bit different, but also the last time I sold one of these plates was years ago. So it's not like the last person who bought it is going to say, Hey, what, you know, this listing doesn't have the same information as the flaw that might, you know what I mean? Like, um, I wouldn't renew a listing that had sold probably within the past six months. Like I'd want that information to be like the item that the person bought for a period of time so that they could refer back to it if they needed to. But you know, anyway, that's oh, probably a whole separate video and I'm going off on a tangent and I'm sorry. Um, but go follow Starla Moore if you sell on Etsy. It's great information all the time. All right. So the next plate that I found. This is a Fiesta plate. I do not know very much about Fiesta at all. Fiesta wear is still in business. Um, there is all sorts of information online to figure out like with the stamps, how old something is. There's all sorts of guides about which colors are retired and when they first started making them, et cetera. Certain colors are very valuable. I always have to look it up every time. I can never figure out the stupid logos. I've never been able to find anything that really helps me with these logos. So anyway, I took this plate. Worst case scenario, it's not worth much and I donate it and who cares, okay? But that's the only Fiesta plate I found. Then I have this platter. This is Jeanette Glass Company. And this particular pattern is called Cherry Blossom. And this is obviously pink depression glass. Cherry Blossom was made in this pink glass. It was made in, I think it was made in clear. And then it was also made in like blue Delphite. And so Delphite is like similar to Jadeite where it's like opaque, but it's blue. And maybe also, I don't know. I feel like there was one other color. Maybe it was, I don't know. Anyway, I got this. This is really cute. Um, I don't really know what a lot of this stuff sells for because I haven't dealt with it in so many years. And I didn't look up a whole bunch of stuff before I did this video because it's, it's overwhelming. There's a lot. So that's just those plates. Um, <laughs> let's get into some mugs. There's so many mugs. Okay. Number one, I have this McDonald's mug. Not, it, it doesn't sell for tons of money. Um, I believe this is also, yeah, this is also Fire King. Um, 
when I looked this up, there are prices all over the place. Somebody had one of these for like fucking ninety seven dollars. You can sell for like 15, 20 bucks. Um, so, but it's cute. I have sold this before. So it's another item where I'm going to be able to use an old listing to renew that. So that's really cool. Um, these are neat. Dunkin' Donuts. Again, we're looking at like 10 or 15 bucks plus shipping. So, but I have one, two, three. Or I might just have four. I don't know if I'll put them up as a set or not, um, but it's nice to have them as a repeatable listing. So if it sells once, it can sell again. So there's those. That's fun. This thing is really cute, but I don't know if I'll be able to sell it. Um, so first of all, it's this little mug, right? And it says, whistle for milk. You can see it's got this cute little birdie on it, right? Um, but the birdie's tail is broken. I think this was a whistle that you could blow into maybe. There are, this is kind of a cheater mug. There's another kind of mug that looks very similar to this. It's probably a little bit larger. And um, I think it, it, it somehow made a whistling sound when the kid drank or something. There's also a version of this where the handle is kind of like a straw. So when you look inside, there will be a hole at the bottom of the handle. And then somehow they could, you know, suck on the, I don't know, whatever is on the end of it as a straw, which is really cute. That's what this made me think of. Again, this, I was going through these trunks with the trunk guy. And so he handed me this, which looked like this. He's like, hey, do you want this? And I was like, yeah, I didn't know they came with lids. Uh, they don't. This is to something else. <laughs> they match, but they don't match because this lid does not go on here. Anyway. So I don't know what I'll do with this since this is broken. Who knows? It sucks because it's like, look how cute the rest of it is, but it's not worth all that much money. And then, especially when you're, you know, now it's worth less. Where do I go? There's so many mugs. Okay. This, I forget what these are called. If this is also a chili bowl, but these are Fire King. This is called, um, I think, Pearl Luster or I think Pearl Luster or Peach Luster. Um, that's what it is. Peach. So it's not my favorite. I used to like these, but they're kind of common ish and they don't get a whole lot of money either, but it's, it's a neat little bowl. These, um, originally had lids on them. The lids are cool looking, but they are frequently missing as in this case. All right. This is a cute little mug, but it's got a chip. So that's sad, but look how adorable this is. This type of mug does sell decently. Again, we're looking at like I want to say like $20 shipped, maybe it's been a while, but you know, this one, I won't be able to sell because it's not, it's got a chip here and a chip here. It's just too many chips to make it worthwhile. Um, but it is really cute. And I love these little handles and stuff. So that's fun. Let's see another one. I think this one also has a chip or I think I have two of these and one of them has a chip, which makes me mad. But in this case, I'll probably still try to sell them because I think the one with a chip is just on the rim. It's like a small chip on the rim. And so because there's two, we'll see. But it's a cute mug. And these sort of like stoneware things also do decently. Um, yeah, design for stoneware. No, whatever. I'm dumping all sorts of trash on the floor. Um, these guys are cute. I don't remember if there's another one of these, but a little matching. These, I assume, would have been in a set of four at some point. Uh, look at, this is interesting. So these are made to be stackable, which is cool. Right? But look at the bottoms. So this looks like it's, I mean, obviously one is filthy, but um, it looks like sort of the, you know how ceramic has like a ridge where it was not glazed? The unglazed rim here seems wider than this one. So that's interesting. They do seem like they're part of the same set, but I wonder if they were produced separately. Um, this is just, I will probably end up donating this. This looks similar to Hall, H-A-L-L. -L. They did a lot of this kind of stuff. This is unmarked. So, oh, maybe it's, is it? I think it's unmarked. If it is marked, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's unmarked. It's not Hall if it is marked because it's whatever the marking is, is not Hall. But anyway, it's neat, but yeah, you know, I don't think it's going for that much. 
um, these little ramekin guys. My boyfriend might want us to have these, but they're not worth selling in my opinion. All right, let's see. These guys are cute. I don't know if these are going to be worth selling. I've seen them online before. I don't think I've ever had them. Obviously, these need a wash. These are wooden. And at this point in their lives, I am sure they are going to be more valuable as display items. I don't know that you want to use these, right? But they're cute. So filthy. Okay. Um, these bowls... My boyfriend picked these up. So here's another one of those Fiesta pieces. This one is not marked on the bottom, but also this is super chippy, chippy, chippy. He picked these up because he thought I might want to use them um, for the cats. So I probably won't. I have a lot of, you know, I have enough dishes to use for the cats. So I'll probably end up donating these. The only reason I would end up selling this is if it's like some kind of rare color that yes, the chips would diminish the value of that, but like some of these pieces are crazy expensive if it's rare. I doubt that's what's going to happen here, but I'll look it up. You know, we'll see. All right. Um, more mugs. So these one, I think I have three, two. Mm, these are fire king. Yes. And then three. It would have been nice to have four, but I have three. So um, fire king. These are cute. Right. I like those kind of mugs. This is the one, this I love. So I think this is Hazel Atlas. Um, this is not marked, but I'm pretty positive that this is Hazel Atlas. Again, memory, I've probably seen them before. Um, this one I found when I was like way up in the corner of the, of the garage ceiling. And uh, it's what sort of led me to some of the other glassware that I was like, okay, let's see. Um, but I was hoping to find more of this, but I didn't. But I really, I really love those. Those are cool. All right. This thing, this is cute, but uh, not worth as much as I was hoping it was. These Ranger Joe. So here's a little set. There might have been additional piece or pieces in this, but uh, Ranger Joe Ranch Mug. So I don't know if this is like a generic... You know, I mean, they're kids' dishes. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Ranger Joe Roundup Bowl. And then it says, Wheat Honeys, Rice Honeys. So I don't know if this was made for a brand similar to, like, Cream of Wheat. Or if this is just playing on the popularity of, like, Westerns and stuff at the time. So, anyway, Ranger Joe. And then there's a little Ranger Joe bug. I looked these up. I forget how much it went for, but it was not impressive to me. Um, I'm going to list them still, but I was hoping they would go for more. I was super excited to find them, but they're not that, whatever. All right. These things, these are not dishes, but I found them in the garage. Um, I don't, I don't think these in particular are going to go for a whole lot, but I grabbed them when I found them. These wooden, these are a little rusty, but right. These wooden measuring stick things, carpenters, rulers, essentially. So um, when I grabbed these, the trunk, oh, girl, wait, the trunk guys were like, oh, they still make those. And I was like, yeah, he's like, those aren't, you know, he's like, those are no big deal. They still make them. Um, I know that I don't know enough about them, but I did know that there are some that are very valuable. I don't know if I have any of those. I don't think I do, but I just got excited because when I was looking some up earlier, so you can see here, it's just like one through whatever, right? But on this side, there's this little metal thing in there that's some kind of extender. So I think like maybe if you have a hard to reach area or so this, this metal thing, I believe slides out one direction or the other. Everything is so rusty right now that it's difficult. But um, I saw one that had one of those guys in there that also sold for a little bit more. Again, this may still sell for nothing. Um, what I was thinking of doing is listing them as a single lot on eBay as an auction and seeing what happens. So um, I'm going to re-research this thing to see if that needs to be listed separately. But, you know, I took them because, hey, there was, just for reference, there was one like a vintage Stanley brand one 
that was listed for like $120 or something. So that's why I was picking them up. Because even if it was like 25 or 50 bucks or something, it's kind of worth it, right? All right, so that's those guys. Let's see. So where are we going to go next? Next, I have this little Porky Pig plastic cup. I don't know if that's going to be worth anything. We'll see. Um, these things, there's two here. I can't remember if I maybe have a third somewhere. So at first, the trunk guy kept handing these to me. At first, I thought they were shakers, but they are not shakers. So they're probably like spice jars or something. I don't see a marking on the bottom. I'll look at it. I have at least these two. I don't know if they're worth anything exciting, but there we go. Um, this is a shaker. I only found one, cobalt blue. I don't remember. I don't. I, I got a bunch of this cobalt blue glass at first because I was like, oh, blue, like, you know, and then once I was, you know, taking it, the guy just everything, all the blue glass, he's like, here's another one, here's another one. And at a certain point, I'm like, oh my God, this blue glass. But, you know, it's another one that people collect. Um, so I've got these little guys. It's nice that there's two. Oops. Oh no. This one literally had something must have broken because a chip just flew off. That's crazy. All right. Like it. Here's the chip. Okay. So I've got those two guys. And then there is this little like, creamer guy. That's cool. Let's see. What are these? This, oh, this is probably just something I will donate. Um, this little plastic cup I thought was really cute. Not going to sell for a lot, but it's adorable. I assume it's not going to sell for a lot. This is an interesting one. All right, so these are salt and pepper shakers. They are filthy, but right, these are plastic. Let's see, S and P. So this is, I believe, hmm, I want to say the brand is Lusterware. I've had some of these in the past. There's a set that's like solid aqua this teal color that sold for a lot um i've had like red and red and white that sold for a lot so i don't know if these particular ones will sell for a lot but these types of little plastic shakers they don't look like much but i've had them sell for a lot of money in the past so that's always exciting i like that that was fun let's see okay this glass uh, my boyfriend found so i thought this was cool so nifty let's see this thing i don't even know how i got this how that came home with me but there it is <laughs> hmm. i've been forgetting that i have that okay another cobalt blue thing there may have been a lid of some sort that went with this um i don't really know what this was for so there it is I gotta get these things moved. All right. This one I thought was really cool. This seems a little bit older to me. So a lot of the glassware, I haven't been talking about eras too much, but everything here seems to range from like the 30s up through the 70s or maybe very early 80s. So like those Dunkin' Donuts mugs are 70s. These things are 70s. Um, these things, I'm not positive, somewhere between 30s and 50s. I'm guessing like 40s, 50s. Um, so this looks earlier to me. This looks a little bit more 30s, maybe 40s. I don't know what this is besides the fact that it's pink glass. But it's cool. I like it. Um, this is cute. Just a milk glass mug with a panda. And do we have markings? We do have markings on the bottom. There's so much dirt in here. Oh, this is Glass Bake, which is another company that does that kind of stuff frequently. But I've got this. Um, I took it because I was like, I don't know. But so, U-Ban Coffee. Um, I think I, I saw a set of these. So this is General Foods. Um, obviously, like some sort of advertising mug. I don't know if that's like purposeful or if that's damaged somehow, like if the, um, like all that white spot in there, if that's the finish, I think that's finished wearing away. This mug, I might not bother selling this, whatever. Anyway, 
there was a set of four different brands. Um, I think they were all coffee related that I saw online when I was trying to research this, but I feel like that's research is now pointless because, um, oh, that's cute. Look at my, I'm forgetting already what I have and I'm getting excited by seeing it again. Okay. Here's just a giant kind of Stein mug, also milk glass, nothing on it. So I feel like it won't sell for a whole lot, but it's interesting. I like it. I like that it's bigger. That's nice. Um, I probably will just donate that. Can't find places to keep putting everything down. <laughs> All right. This is plastic, but it's like a very hard plastic. And um, I think it's technically melamine. This is Boonton Ware, um, made in Boonton, which is here in lovely New Jersey. So, love Boonton, Boonton Ware, it's very cool. This thing, same color, but this is ceramic. I don't know what this is exactly. This is Hank's Craft is what's on the bottom. I don't know what this is. I'm assuming it had a lid at some point, but I don't know if it's like a condiment thing. I, I don't know. It's cute though. We'll figure it out. All right, let's see. Then I have this teapot, which is really pretty. And this is also a little bit older. I love the flower detail there. And you can see it's yellow. This says USA on the bottom. So these are harder. This could be California pottery. Um, I don't think it's McCoy. McCoy is another pottery brand. But um, I should be able to find this online, like this exact thing. I feel like I've seen it before. Cleaner, obviously, but that's really cool. Look at this. We are almost half an hour into this video, and I'm not, eat I'm like halfway through this tote. And then I have a second tote with more stuff in it. So let's see what happens. All right, here's a cute little mug. The pan. I like the finish on it, but it's going to be a bitch to clean. Oh, nope. Got a crack. So that sucks. I suppose I could still sell it. I have a mug that I kept because it had a crack like that. I've had it for years, been using it for years. The crack doesn't impact anything, but I feel like people don't want to buy stuff with a crack unless it's like a super collectible piece. I don't think that that is. Okay, keep going. My legs are falling asleep. This is a cute little pair of glasses. It's another one of these things where I have a friend who um, loves monarch butterflies and she like rescues them and stuff. So I feel like I should give her these glasses. But also, I love them. They're like some of my favorite pieces, and that means I want to list them. So, let's see. I might put them over anyway. All right, more cobalt. This thing also probably had a lid. This is the very like Greek kind of Greek key design, which was also a popular theme. Um, I want to say this is 40s ish, but I, I don't remember. And most of this cobalt stuff does not have a stamp on it. Here's another like footed bowl. So, you know, um, I know Hazel Atlas did cobalt, but I feel like there were probably other companies that did also. Okay, let's see. What do I want to grab next? These are um, something I don't care about and I will probably just donate. Oh, here's that second little flower mug. And so there's a little chip on the rim. So I think that's the only chip and I'll probably just list them as a pair together and not worry about it. And I don't know where its friend went, but we don't care. Okay. Next, next we have some more saucers, but these are, um, let's see. So I've got a few of the Jeanette glass. This is the cherry blossom print that we talked about earlier. I've got one, two, three of those. And then I have three more random pink glass dishes. These aren't really saucers. These might be saucers, but they might be bread plates. Um, these I think are all bread plates. So there's another, there's a couple companies that make these things and this one's pretty. I don't remember what they're called. I'm going to have to like do some once I start digging around on the internet, it'll help jog my memory. Usually what'll happen is so like to, to figure out what some of this is, right? Like 
So the first thing I would do is Google pink depression glass plate, right? And then I'm just going to start looking through and seeing, you know, like this particular one, I know that this shape and this design is common. I know I'm going to know who the maker is. Cannot remember it right now. Um, but pink glass, you know, depression glass plate, whatever. And then I start finding the one that match and then I can see what the, you know, what the names for this are. Hopefully I would find others like this. Um, and then if like the pink glass didn't work, just maybe depression glass plate with rose design and maybe that'll help bring up something similar to this. You know, I kind of hunt around like that. And sometimes like I'm going to have to do that for this too. I'm guessing this is a bud vase. Um, you know, it's a, it's a little bit of work trying to figure it out. Maybe I'll try and do a video when I'm actually trying to find out what they are. But I don't know if that's going to be boring for you or not. This is also depression glass. This is uranium glass. And so this one, um, it's one of those things I've seen it enough and I can recognize it when I see it. But this will glow under black light. There is even sort of like a yellowish green glow to it now that's a little bit different than just like a solid green glass without uranium in it. Is uranium radioactive? Yes, it is. Um, I feel like these are, this is not doing enough to bother you. Maybe there's debate about that on the internet somewhere. I don't know. I'm not concerned about it for my own health and safety. Lots of people collect it. Um, people have entire China cabinets full of it because they love it. Um, so, you know, it's cool. All right, here's another one of these peach luster things. This is, again, not a very exciting piece, a little ramekin type cup. So I don't know what I'll do with that. This mug is cool, another Fire King. So you can see this is similar to the orange. It's just a different color, but nifty. And they are also stackable. I like those things. And these are in great condition too, which is nice. All right, let's see. More pink depression glass. I think this pattern was also Jeanette. I don't know what it's called though. So this is a sugar bowl. Sometimes sugar bowls had lids. Oh, maybe that's what this guy was supposed to be is some sort of sugar bowl. I don't know. Sometimes they had lids. Sometimes they didn't. Let's see. All right. This is fun. Little glass. This is, I think, oh, it doesn't say. I thought it was Hazel Atlas. Um, I believe these are sour cream jars. So it would have come like this with a little plastic lid on it. And I actually have another piece somewhere that I could show you an example for that's different, but similar. Um, and it would have had like whatever sour cream, I guess in there. Uh, I think it was sour cream. I was thinking cottage cheese. I'm pretty sure it was sour cream. Anyway, so there's that. I have, let's see, I have at least one more that's that same. And so they would make these little designs. And so, you know, what it was, was you would buy your sour cream and then you have drinking glasses when you're all done. Brilliant. Today we buy uh, sour cream and then we have Tupperware when we're done and it's trash. So whatever. Anyway, um, two more little bowls that my boyfriend picked up potentially for cat. It, I'm not, I'm, I'm blaming him. Um, I, think that he picked up two and then there were two that were somehow in with the stuff that I got from the trunk guys or with the trunk guy. I don't know. Um, I don't want them. I will look them up. The ones that aren't chipped and the chipped fiesta. I'm going to look them up. <laughs> Chances are I'm just going to end up getting rid of them. Um, this is really cute. This little plastic like soldier is a plastic little soldier guy. The little kid's cup. I know it's disgusting. It's filthy true we got 35 minutes okay um let's see i'm trying to figure out if i want to keep going or do another video since we're already at the half hour mark my second tote is a little bit less full the first one was filled to the brim the second one is like less than half full so i feel like i should break this up into an, yet another video all right let's see i'm going to show you a couple more pieces and then all right, let's see these two are dumb Again, I'm probably just going to donate these. Ooh, I'm running out of space too. Okay. Let's see. And then this glass, Robin from Batman and Robin. We're going to keep this one because um, my boyfriend likes it. 
So Let's see, that one's going to stay with us. We're not selling it. Oh, here's another one of these guys. Here, we stuck that over here. And oh, since I mentioned it, oh, I really want to save this for another video. But you know, I said those those sour cream jars came with little plastic lids on them. So this is very exciting to me. This bowl is made by Fire King. At the bottom there. And these are typically referred to as chili bowls. And I don't think I knew that they ever had lids on them. Um, now, it could be that this lid is not supposed to be on there. I can't make out what the lid had, right? But this is how I found this. And so if it actually was supposed to come with a lid, that's super cool. I am most likely going to keep this bowl because I love these. We have one right now. Um, tragically, I've had a couple others that we broke. One we broke in the microwave. Um, one I broke washing dishes. And I can't remember if we broke a third one or not. So like part of me feels like I should not keep this because pink especially is like a sought after color in these things. So I feel like I should not chance it. I should like allow it to live its life somewhere else. But on the other hand, I love it. And the pink, so much fun. So I have an aqua one currently. Let me see what happens. All right. Um, if I can find an example of it having a lid, I don't, I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, that was super cool. It could just be that some random other lid got stuck to it. Um, all right, I'm going to show you two more and then I'm going to end it and we'll make another video to keep going. These guys, these are also more Jeanette, uh, Jeanette Glass Company. I believe these are, I believe this is cherry blossom. Oh dear, I almost dropped that. Um, I can't find the cherries. Like the cherry blossom pattern is very, and this is like this cute little dessert glass. Um, there's actual like cherries in it, you know, which you can see. I'm not going to try and show you now, but oh yeah, this is cherry blossom. Okay, cool. So those are really cute. Anyway, so a lot of the Jeanette glass, that was fun. All right, so I'm going to end this now. End it. And look at my poor little fingers. This is disgusting. I'm gonna end this and then we're gonna, I'm gonna also reset because I'm running out of room to put things on the floor. You don't need to know all that. This was part two. We're gonna move on to part three. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this. I would love to hear any comments. If you have experience with glassware, or if this is all brand new to you, if this is glassware is interesting to you. Um, besides the fact that I hate shipping it, part of the reason I don't get it anymore is I really don't run across fun vintage glassware the way that I used to. I used to find so much of it. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this and I will see you again very shortly.